Okay, now we have our login and sign up screen and we're able to navigate back and forth between the two. Uh, but in this episode, we're going to add a few more things, add a few styling and add a, add a few new uh, components from React Native. So I'm going to go through it a bit quickly because uh, there's nothing core in here. Um, and then the styling is really up to you. So you don't really have to follow my styling, but it looks pretty ugly and it's hard to actually use right now. So um, I'm going to add a few stylings and I'm going to show you the difference between a button and a touch hole opacity. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is go over this button versus touch hole opacity. So right now we just have a button. Uh, it just goes to sign up page and that's about it. And if we wanted to style this, it's kind of difficult. I don't really understand why um, Apple keeps it, the styling like this. Uh, maybe there's another way. Uh, but I actually added some styling for a very basic button of some margin padding, aligning things center, uh, making the border like a gray, like a light gray, uh, a border width of one, and then rounding the edges with a, a width of 200 pixels. So I wouldn't focus too much on this uh, because you can customize it however you like. Uh, but just keep in mind, look at the camel case instead of uh, dashes. So anywhere there'd be a dash, it's just going to be together with a camel case letter following instead. So padding vertical, padding dash vertical, or aligned items uh, with camel case would be aligned dash items in HTML. Uh, so that's really the main difference. Um, and then if you ha if you want to reference anything else, it's well, all the uh, sizes and stylings are in uh, React Native, which is super simple to take a look at. So we're gonna look at this button styling that I added right now. Uh, so let's go to login, and the way we're gonna call that is since we're just we already did our global styling in a previous episode, I just added to that one style sheet, and it's already being pulled in in all of our components. So it's super easy to call. You don't have to copy and paste anything. Um, but we're gonna see it, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't really style a button the same way uh, very easily basically. Uh, so what I like to use instead is touchable opacity. So touch so touchable opacity is um, has the same functionality like you could do on press the same exact way. Um, and you can customize the text that's in between it a lot more. So if you wanted to change the color of the text or change uh, the, the width of the text, like the um, bold versus thin, uh, you could do that however you like. And you could put really anything in touchable opacity. You can make the whole screen a touchable opacity, which I actually did in an in a episode in the future of when you take a photo, I just had the whole screen have that touchable opacity button and it's pretty cool because the, there's feedback. Um, when you click on it, it goes opaque for a little bit, and then once you let go, it goes back to normal. So you can see there's uh, feedback and there's action to that. So we're going to add that same style to this touchable opacity, and inside we're gonna do just text. Um, and instead of having a title on this button, we're gonna put it in as text. And let's see the difference. So we didn't import it. Obviously we have to import it from React Native to be able to use it. And there we go. Has the same exact styling, uh, but this one actually works. And see how it, uh, how it goes opaque? So it's just a lot easier to style and it just looks a hell of a lot nicer. So I'm actually gonna remove this button. I don't really use the actual native button um, ever. Uh, so I always use touch opacity. It's a few extra lines of code, but there's a lot more flexibility with it. Uh, and another thing I wanted to add was, there's since this is a password, we don't want to just show what the password is. So there's a prop that's a secure text entry, I believe it is, and it's just true or false. So it defaults to false, obviously. So now it has dots instead. Uh, so it's more secure. Uh, you could, I mean, the default is just false. So you can see that this would be the same thing as putting false. Hello. So it's really unnecessary to put it on everything unless you're using it. 
Um, and then what else are we gonna do? Okay, we added one more style for input. Uh, this is just like putting a border on the bottom and making it a little bit wider. So you can see that when we put in the password right now, it kind of like goes off screen a little bit. And it, that's because it's automatically adjusting to the width of the input. So it looks a little weird. So we're just gonna do like a full width and then some a little bit of extra styling to put a border on the bottom. So you can see that it's, it's very simple, um, but it just looks a lot nicer and it's a lot easier to read. And then I'm gonna remove this login. So just two extra styles and it actually looks like a legit uh, login page now. And just for reference, the border is just, I did a width of 85% of the screen. Uh, so that'll just based on like iPhone 5 is kind of the most annoying one to do with because that's such a small screen compared to like the iPhone 10 or basically any of them. Uh, so I did 85% uh, and then just some margin and padding with a little bit of larger font size. I think the default is 14. I did 15 or I did 16. I did the same shade of gray for the border and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. I don't want to cover that too much. Um, one other thing I want to do on this page is remove this header. So there's nothing there, but the header bar is still actually there. Uh, you can you could tell that by everything aligning center. So everything's uh, pushed down just a little bit. Um, so we're going to do go and set off navigator. And just like we have in tab navigator, we have this navigation options we have the same capability in the stack navigator. So we get past and basically the same exact thing and we do header null. And we can see that header is no longer there so it's just a lot cleaner. So just a few extra changes uh, and it just looks a lot nicer. And actually that yellow bar is good reference. So there is a line of code that we could use to get rid of this yellow bar. Uh, this one's just always going to pop up because we're using the debugger, so it's a little bit slower. So in order to get rid of that, we could just do stop debugging. Um, and then you could also do like, uh, I'll actually copy and paste it. So I'm using it in here. We could do console.disable yellow box. So console.disable yellow box equals to true. So no matter if we're getting errors or not, it just will never show the yellow box. So sometimes it gets annoying, it covers up the, the bottom tab navigator. But when we're developing, I like to uh, disable that because sometimes the warnings are helpful. If, if it's a legit warning, you should probably fix it. Uh, the only problem with the debugger is there's nothing really we do to fix it outside of just not use it. And sometimes we need to use it. So um, use that as much as you want, um, but for us, I'm, I'm going to disable it for now. So we have our styling in place, but we want to add one more button to be able to actually log us in. We go back and forth between sign up and login, but we want to be able to like log into the actual home screen. So we're just going to add one more touchable opacity and name it login. I'm actually gonna remove the styles from this one and then so on this page I'm going to create a temporary function called this.login So we're not going to create too many functions like in the component itself, uh, but for this page we're actually going to in the future. But for right now, all this button is going to do is go to the home page. And remember, we have access to navigation because it's in the root component. So this is Redux right here, and the next level down is navigation. So we're going to have access to this.props.navigation through every component since we're using uh, React Navigation in every component. Um, so at first, I know that's a little bit like magic, um, but just keep in mind this navigation is available on every page that is using React Navigation, which for us is all of them. Um, and then 
to navigate to an actual page, we have to pass in the uh, component we want to use, and so we want to navigate to home. So home is the tab navigator. So let's see that in action. So if we just do login. Okay, objects are not valid as return. Okay, so on the home screen, remember we changed our reducers to one single parent and then the children are counter and user. So we didn't change that in the home screen and we just set counter to state. So state is rendering, is returning the entire global state. So we just want the counter one. So now this is only going to reference the counter, there we go, the counter item in the global state. So we don't want to pass in the entire thing. Um, soon we're going we're, we're gonna to remove this because we don't need a counter and we're just going to reference user. Um, but now you can see every time we reload the screen it goes in straight to the login page and there's no way to get back. So that's exactly how we want it to interact. We want the user to interact with our application. Um, right now, you don't need to pass in anything. So you could just do, okay, if this.props.user.email, okay, if, if that, this.props.user.email. So this is saying, if the user email exists, then log them in, but if not, don't log them in. So this is very basic functionality. We're not verifying anything. We're not verifying the password, but this is what we're gonna leverage Firebase for so that we could use Firebase to check, okay, check the database. Does this user exist? Yes, then let them in. Uh, if not, then force them to create an account within Firebase, and that's the user object that we're gonna reference to whether we let them in or not into the uh, application. Uh, and so there's the basic functionality without using Firebase and AIM real authentication just yet. Um, I'm gonna add a few more things to make it just look a little bit nicer. So I just do or. Super simple. So, and then we're going to add the styling to our sign -up page. And then we're also going to add the secure text entry to the sign up page password. And we're going to add two more fields. Or, sorry, I didn't need to remove that. We want to add two more text fields for a username and a little bio about that person. So we're going to create new functions. So, update username, update, bio, and we didn't create them yet, but we're going to import everything right now, so that when we do, it should just work. And then remember we have to go into and create an action, so we're going to get two more actions update username and we're gonna do a username because that's how we're gonna search for users uh, instead of based on their email um, we want to allow them to be able to update their username and then just people search by that so the cool thing with Firestore instead of like regular Firebase is that you can search based on text fields a specific fi specific field uh, so we're going to leverage that in our application So you can really name these whatever you want. You can just do input, honestly, on all of them. So maybe it's, but I kind of like to make it more clear of what you're passing in. So I just pass in what we called it in the actual component. And then we just have to update our reducer. So update username, username. This one's important because this is the name of the field in our state. 
and then bio, update bio. So now we're able to update the email, password, username, and bio. Of email, password, username, bio. And then sign up, we want to do username, bio, bio. So now you can do sign up, we have all these fields, username, bio. And then we want to add a button as well. So we're going to use our touchable opacity. Same thing. And then call it sign up instead of login. And we don't have a sign up function yet. So we're just going to do console.log this.props.user. So now you can see if we go to our oh, we're not importing it. So now you can see in our console, you don't have to have the actual browser open, but you could actually use the console as well. You can see the fields updating as we type them in. And everything is filling out exactly how we want. So we have an object of counter, which is still there, I haven't touched. Then we have a user with fields of bio, email, password, and username. And this is exactly how we want it set up so that we can pass this directly to Firebase once we get that hooked up in the next episode. So next episode, we're going to add a whole new technology, which is huge. I love working with Firebase. It's super fun because we could use Firebase authentication. Uh, we could implement Facebook logins through Firebase so that that handles all the logins, whether it's just uh, email password and Facebook. Uh, we could use it to for our database. So it's kind of just like a big JSON store. We could like save our activity, our posts, and the users. And then we could also use it for just storage, our image storage. Uh, in a previous uh, course, I used AWS. That was a little more hurdles to jump through to get that hooked up. Um, so we're just going to use Firebase for everything right here. So it's super simple. You hook it up once, and you can use all the features of Firebase and store it per user or per post or however you want to structure the data. So... Super exciting stuff, and I hope you join me for the next couple of lessons of getting Firebase hooked up and then authenticating a user through it. So, I'll see you then. Peace.